is tut. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart. Today we're taking a look at the blend tool inside of Illustrator. Now I released this piece of artwork the other day and somebody asked me how I achieved this effect down on the mountains. But rather than show you that specifically, uh, I thought I'd take a step upwards, up a level and show you the basic use of the blend tool, which is how this and many other things are achieved. So I'm just going to dive right into that then. Um, you can see the inside of Illustrator, I've got my different components from that piece of artwork. Um, one of them is a mountain, which as you can see, I just sourced from this photograph here. Um, you can source from a photograph, you can do your own thing, it doesn't really matter. What I'm going to do for this one is use this photograph as a reference for our tutorial. Okay, I'm just going to create a new document, it doesn't really matter um, what the dimensions of it are, so I'm just going to choose 1920 by 1080 for web, and I'm just going to put my image off to the side for now. Okay, now essentially what the blend tool does is it allows you to create two objects um, and a, the computer will generate and process um, all the different forms that those objects would need to take in order to blend into each other um, and put them between them. So let's do a really simple example to start with. I'm going to draw a square here, which has a white inside, a white fill and a black stroke. Okay. Oops, that was a white stroke. Okay. And just pop it there. I'm going to duplicate that holding Alt and Shift and move it along. And I'm going to rotate it. And I'm going to change the fill to be bright red. Now this isn't pretty, but it will illustrate a point. Okay. Now the blend tool lives over in the tool palette here. You will find it just underneath the eyedropper and its shortcut is W. Now the way this tool works is it tries to generate what it thinks is the best solution for blending two shapes together. So if I were to left click on this shape here and then left click on the right shape, you'd see it would generate a bunch of copies to blend those two shapes together. Now, you don't actually have much control over it when you use the shape in that instance. Um, you can, if you notice, hover on a point and then a second point, you'll get shapes that um, generate from those two points. So if I chose the bottom two here, you can see that it angles slightly. Whereas if you just click a shape in general, the little cursor doesn't go black and it will just do a straight uh, blend between them. Again, you don't get too many options there. So if you want a bit more control over that, which is how I created this mountain here, you need to have your blending options open. For that, you need your properties panel in the latest version of uh, Adobe CC. In the older versions, you can just go down to object, blend, and make, and then blend options, which you can also do in this version. Um, <clears throat> first of all, generate your blend. So click on one shape, click on the second one. Okay. Doing so will adapt your properties panel over here and give you your tool options for blend, which you should click. Now clicking that does the same as going down to option blend and make. Now make sure you've got preview checked in this one and you can see all the different options that you can have for blending. For example, smooth color is basically the computer's understanding of making the best possible mathematical blend between the two shapes. That is your default option. Secondly, you have specified steps of which you can specify the number of steps that you want to have in between those two shapes. If I said 12, for example, it would generate 12 shapes in between the two. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you said specified distance, that would be in pixels, the distance between each step. So if I said 20, that would be 20 pixels per step, and it would generate the amount required to fill that space. For this one on our mountain, I used specified steps and I used align to path. And what that means is if you had a path instead of a shape, it would align those uh, replicas of it to the path as opposed to um, the page, which always aligns to the x-axis of the page. Okay, let's leave it like that for now. And you can kind of see that um, our two shapes now have a um, number of steps between them. There's a few things we can do, okay? If you reposition any of these other shapes, the uh, places in between them will automatically update and generate, which is good for you because it means if you come back in and edit something later on, you don't have to redo the animation. Secondly, you'll see that we have a path in between this now as well. So if I were to go um, onto our shape uh, blend tool and go back to our tool options and choose align to path, and then I came in and edited this path in the middle by say adding an anchor point um, and then adjusting said anchor point, you'll notice the path uh, the shapes then follow the path. Again, if you wanted to, you could Bezier curve this and get some nice effects. This is a really quick and easy way to generate things, basically. Now, we don't want that. That's rubbish. What we want is some of this mountain over here. Now, you can see in this other example, there's um, varying shapes 
and thicknesses to the lines and things like that. It's very easy to replicate. For this specific example, however, I'm going to give you instructions on how to create each individual segment. This won't obviously apply to every scenario, but it will serve as an example. Now, let's create a new layer and lock off our image just so we don't accidentally select it. And I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to give it a stroke width of one. Actually, no, stroke width of three, I think I did last time, and a fill of nothing. <clears throat> Now, understanding this image is all about understanding the different planes and faces that this mountain has. If you want to simplify it, that is best. Say, for example, this area here could be simplified into one plane. This area here could be another. This darker area here could be another. You're basically going to go around and trace the edges of all these different shapes, just roughly, because it is a mountain after all, so it doesn't matter if it's jagged. And here's the important thing. You're going to want to close off each shape that you make, even when they overlap. So say, for example, this is a shape that I made here. And then I wanted to make another plane that fills, say, all of this area. Although we could technically stop there, create a new one, join them up. You're going to want to match up these anchor points with your previously made ones. Like so. Um, because you need closed shapes for this technique, essentially. OK, so they should just match up like so. Probably best if you don't have snap to pixel on um, because you're not wanting to actually snap this to pixels because that will stop you aligning up those two shapes. Um, I won't do the whole thing. You can kind of see it's the same technique all the way through. OK, so now we've got a few separate shapes that we can use that we need to fill with various copies. Now, the way to do that is to, first of all, group your selections. So if you double click on it, it'll automatically go inside that path. If you draw an initial path in here, it will automatically turn it into a group. And that's what we want. Let's deselect off of that. And I'm just going to drag my layers panel so that I've got it open alongside my properties. And now we need to create two paths that we can make shapes between. If we tried to make um, a blend shapes between this one shape, the computer wouldn't understand. The computer needs two separate shapes to do that. So what I'm going to do is roughly match the two sides that I want to replicate a bit further outside of the shape. So if I did something like this, overextending slightly on either end, um, and then on the other side did the same thing, but following roughly the shape of that. Doesn't matter if you get it exact, that's not the point. You can now see that we've got two shapes the roughly follow a larger pattern of the inside area. All we need to do now is select both of these shapes. Again, you can go to the blend tool and click and click, or you can go to object, blend, make, and it will blend the two options. Now, because it's a path, the computer has decided that we only need one frame or one blend in between these two to replicate that shape. Now, that's not what we want. So we need to go to the tool options. And this is where it comes into specified steps. You need to specify the number of copies you want. Now, that in is entirely up to you and all it does is determine the density and the overall darkness of that area. Now you can see that some of these areas have snow, some of them have less snow, so we want probably more lines here to simulate that darker area. I'm going to try 12 to start with, hit preview, probably not quite enough, maybe let's try 24. Okay, that looks good to me. You can see now that these are following the arcs of this path and if we hit OK and adjust any of these points individually, you'll notice that the paths update for that. So you can tweak and edit to your heart's content. Say you wanted um, this whole area to come down to make it a little bit thicker along the bottom there like that, and that looks good. You can do so. Okay, oops, didn't mean to drop out of that there. Make sure you're still inside your um, group, okay? So now inside of this group, you should have two paths um, and your original shape. So if I move these two paths, you'll see we've still got our original shape here and our two new paths. You'll also notice that these don't have anchor points. You can't edit these individual blend anchor points. You can only edit the two on the outside. So select that path and your original shape path and group them and drop inside that group. And then when you twirl down, you'll see you've got original path and your other two which are blended together. Select that one, copy and paste in place with command shift V or control shift V. And that will automatically put it on top. The next thing we're going to do is clip this so that it only appears inside of there. And the best way to do that is to flip your um, fill and stroke so that the top copy is now a fill with no stroke. And then using your layers palette is the easiest way to select it. Just shift click so you've selected your path on top and your blend path. And then right click make clipping mask. And what that'll do is just clip it to that shape on top, leaving you with one clipped path 
with all your blends and one click path for your outlines. Okay, and you can see where the rest of that evolved from. It really is just a process of um, trial and error with what looks good. Uh, the other thing I did was just thin out some of these lines. Um, so some of them are one pixel, some of them are three pixels. You can see that if you drop inside here, it's kind of difficult to select your individual paths. So it's best to do it from the layer palette. You can actually come down to here like this, select both of those, and you can drop the thickness down to one. And then you're left with a thicker border with a thinner inside. So when it comes to blend, that's pretty much it. Um, one of the other things people use this for are sort of smooth shapes. You've probably seen them. Um, if I were to draw a very smooth curve like so, uh, and then duplicate and offset it, maybe, maybe shrink it down a bit. You've probably seen things like this where it's like a very linear geometric -y style pattern. Um, that is also done using the blend tool. So you can select both of those create a path between them, um, blend make, and then blend options. Um, let's just go specified steps and say maybe 50, see what that looks like. You can see that that's where people get these really cool kind of overlaid linear shapes from, um, which you've probably seen everywhere. But seeing somebody requested how I did that, this is probably the way that I'm gonna teach it. So thanks very much for watching everybody. I hope you learned something today. Um, bit of a high concept one, I know, but stick with it and you'll be drawing cool stuff in no time at all. And hopefully I'll see you all next time on Tipped Up. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.